first time I ever preached on it. <clears throat> I spent literally all day today, except when we had lunch. Um, I, I, I think we left the hotel at 6.37 to get over here as quick as we could. I know I was freaking some people out thinking that uh, I wouldn't make it again. <laughs> but um, um, I'm very excited about what we're going to talk about. But when you look at this, it's really quite interesting. I just want to give you a little groundwork here for a second. Um, we've heard the phrase lunatic, all of us have, and some of you may not know the, the source of it. It comes from a Latin word, and it's, it's uh, being moonstruck. It's the, the, the belief that somehow that the moon, as it does with tides, it does with humans. I actually had somebody write me, uh, oh, I'm thinking it was probably two weeks ago on a Facebook post, and um, very sincere lady, and she said, well, I believe that since man is made up of so much water, that, uh, you know, the moon does that, you know, and that it does that to us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting, the, the craziness sometimes that people get into about this stuff. But a lunatic is someone that they believe, which there's absolutely no scientific research to back it up, but they believe that it affects people in ways that it pulls out the bad in people. And that's why, you know, you had stories like Wolfman. You know, he shows up when there's a full moon. And, um, and really what this is all about is um, just another slap in the face of how God's got it all covered. And the Lord just said, Let's, don't even worry about that. Uh, you know, in Psalm it says, The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. And um, there's a lot of people struck, moonstruck, over this doctrine or this teaching that's going around called the Blood Moon Tetrax. And uh, we'll, we'll go into detail about this in a minute. But it's really superstition. The idea that somehow the moon phase or maybe the formation of stars when you were born or maybe what sign you were born under or, or all these other things or maybe... If you're out and you see a, a comet fly by or shooting star, I mean, these, these are things you wish upon because somehow we believe that these celestial bodies have some type of impact on our lives. And, and really, folks, this is literally what superstition is. Uh, you know, as, you, as we get smarter and smarter about these things, we find out it's, it's not so out of the ordinary. The moon is is um, created by God. He was the one who designed it. Without the moon, there would be no life whatsoever on the planet. God knew all this beforehand. And it's not unusual for many of the planets in, in just our little solar system to have moons. Uh, of course, um, when you start getting into this, you get some pretty bizarre teaching. And I'm going to say very questionable teachings that are being taught literally like all the other fads and phases we go through. We, we jump from one uh, fad to another fad to another craze. To, and the latest one is this thing about the blood moons. And really, to be honest with you, when you, and you'll see this as we develop this tonight, that with the right type of manipulation of facts and fiction, they have been able to present a case. And what has happened, a lot of people are really falling for it. Now, this is especially true with believers for some reason, because we have a tendency to be a little more spiritually minded in most cases. And if you're not a Christian, people that are superstitious or whatever, in, in some kind of form of some form of religion. But if we'll be honest tonight, and if you've read your Bible, and I hope that you have, if you've been saved for any amount of time, you should have made a good effort to get through God's Word. But if you've been around for a while and you've read the Word, you've noticed that there's absolutely no mention whatsoever about the blood moon tetrads. They just don't exist. There's nothing about it, and there is absolutely no significance that are placed on the four blood moons 
that show up in, in uh, you know, sequence. And of course, uh, the Bible doesn't even refer to them whatsoever. And literally, until just a handful of years ago, nobody even talked about it. I mean, the church has been around for 2,000 years, and nobody, no preacher, no Bible student, no, no prophecy teacher had ever brought it up until a particular guy discovered some secret, hidden truths in the Bible. And this is what, and I don't mean this critical because I'm a full gospel person. Um, you know, I don't know what to call ourselves. We, we, call, you know, we say we're Pentecostals or charismatic or whatever, and we don't live up to any of the titles that we give ourselves. But I definitely find it kind of sad that that type, the full gospel, charismatic, Pentecostal realm of believers are much more open to these little fads. And that's very bad, to be honest with you. And yet, we're also open to these new revelations. And uh, you, you find it all the time. And I'll just give you a little rule of thumb. If it's new, then it is not true. I mean, when Pastor said a moment ago about old-fashioned, you better believe. I mean, brother, everything that God wants us to know is plainly revealed in God's Word. But if you want to talk about heaven, don't read the Bible anymore. Find somebody's uh, experience about heaven. That's, that's what you read now. If you want to know what the Bible says about heaven, then you'll get offended because it doesn't fit our thing. And so we got to find somebody's experience or somebody's after death experience or near death experience to somehow come up with. And it's, it's, it's sad to say that's how little we respect the word of God. And all we've done is open ourselves up to lots of trouble. Now, one of the things that I have found speaking on prophecy down through the years, down through the decades, <clears throat> is that there is a lot of confirmation bias that associates itself with prophecy teachers. And I'll be honest with you, we are all guilty of this. And I think, like everything else, we have to learn to make ourselves better. In one place or the other, in one time or other in the past, we've all done this stuff. And we, uh, especially if you have a tendency to think deeply, and if you have a tendency to be superstitious, or a pessimist, you will somehow be able to connect the dots and come up with this self-fulfilling prophecies that we're so commonly seeing happen. And really what ends up happening, when I talk about confirmation bias, really the definition is this. It's a type of selective thinking whereby one tends to notice and to look for what confirms their beliefs and then at the same time ignore and not look for or undervalue the relevance of what contradicts one's beliefs. Now, when I talk about what I'm going to talk about tonight, you will see it in 99.9% .9 of the teachers and preachers that preach on this. You'll see confirmation bias show up. You'll see self-fulfilling prophecies being at the edge of all this. Well, you know, it's it's like the... The guy who says, man, this is so weird. Every time I wear my football jersey, my favorite team wins. You know, and if you don't believe this really happens to grown adults, watch sometimes. I remember as a younger man, I had a little more time to, to watch television. And I would remember every once in a while watching a baseball game. I love baseball. And I would see these guys, and they'd come up to the, to the plate, and they'd do something. They'd either, you know, do the sign of the cross, or they'd hit the bat on the, on the bottom of their shoe, or they'd do something, this little thing that they go through, because in the past when they did that, they hit a home run. Or, they got, or if they didn't do it, they struck out. And so they just think. And now, folks, let me tell you, scientifically, that hitting the bottom of your shoe with your baseball bat is not going to make you strike out or hit a home run. But it, it, when you are into this frame of, of thinking, this confirmation bias, 
you really start thinking like that. And to be totally honest, this is really a problem in the church. And um, we'll talk more about this. But let's, let's just give you an example of what I'm talking about for just a minute. Uh, these are the, the, the last three tetrads that uh, have occurred. And uh, one thing I saw a guy recently show is that it points to Israel. For example, from the first tetrad back in 49 over to the second one, was it took place in a stretch of 19 years. And then the third tetrad showed up 48 years later. Well, how many can notice there's an interesting number there? 1948. There you go. Proof positive that the blood moons are a confirmation that this has to do with Israel. The only problem is, folks, is that that's really not being honest. Because if you look at the chart itself and examine it, it's not accurate. It is not true. Now, if you just look at this this particular chart, it kind of appears to be that way. But literally from April 13, 1948 to April 13, 1968 is in fact 19 years. But from that point on, it ain't going to work. I mean, no matter which way you turn it, through the second, through the third, or however you stretch it out, you're not going to get the night, the, the 40, 48 years. The problem is because you have to fudge a little bit on the year. You've got to overlap to get 1948 out of it. Now, the, this is a, a perfect example of how this kind of stuff works. No matter how you do it, now you can, you, you spread it out, it makes it look like it, but when you look at it close enough, it's, it's like looking at, um, you know, looking at something far away and it appears to be something until you get closer to it and then you realize, hey, your, your focus is way off. And uh, people say stuff like this. I mean, I've heard this in the last year and a half, two years. I have heard this every single time we bring it up. But John, isn't it very obvious that every time... These blood moons occur, it's on a Jewish holiday. Doesn't that say anything to you, John? Don't you think that that proves it? Well, to be honest with you, no. And the reason I say no is when you realize that the Jewish calendar is based on the moon. It would be impossible for there to be a holiday that somehow did not fall on a moon day, okay, a, a full moon or a, or what is some type of because everything. See, we base our Gregorian calendar on the sun. They, Israel, and God said, "I'm going to make you different." They base theirs on the moon, okay. That's why there's the dates are off because they're going to buy a 28 day thing. Well, now you'll never find it any different than this. You can't. It will be impossible. So guess what? The confirmation bias is not working. That would be like saying, dude, can you believe Easter showed up on Sunday this year? (laughs) It's crazy. It's a sign. Because I remember it showed up last year on Sunday. Duh. Because you know why? We base our calendars on the sun. Okay. And as I mentioned last night, by the way, um, Ishtar, the, the whole planetary alignments and all that stuff. This was a a celebration. Easter was something celebrated thousands of years before Jesus rose from the dead. It all had to do with the moon and the sun, and it was the first Sunday after the new moon in the spring equinox. Well, here's the deal, folks. I want to make this perfectly clear, though. So no one gets offended. I want you to know, I believe with all of my heart, that Jesus Christ will literally physically come back to this planet and he will set up his physical kingdom 
and rule out of Jerusalem in the nation of Israel. There's no doubt about that. And to be honest with you, I believe that his coming is very soon. I anticipate the rapture to take place at any moment. I am not being critical about the coming of the Lord. Don't misunderstand where I stand on this. And yet, I am not convinced that it is right to do what we're doing about this because it is always wrong. It's always unbiblical. It's always dangerous to set a date and to make predictions because what's really going to happen out of this, folks, we are going, instead, well, we, we're using this to reach people. People's eyes are being, no, you know what's going to happen when this is all over? Once September 28th comes and goes, you know what people are going to do? Oh, yeah, I've heard about this before. You know, where is the promise of his coming since our fathers fell asleep? But we've heard about this. All we're doing, folks, is adding to the skepticism. I mean, if we just leave things alone, I mean, here it is. It's the end of the world again. Okay, I got news for you. And when we get done with this, you're going to find out that what we're actually doing is calling God a liar and his word a liar. Now, let me just give you a couple examples of something. How would you like to have been alive in 1666? You know, 1666. You think, you think, you know, it's weird. Now, imagine what it would have been like to live back then. You know, people living in Europe had already become very concerned because they just got out of a plague that literally killed 100,000 people. Literally one uh, out of every five people living in Europe had died from this plague. And now... They're predicting the end because it's 1666. It's the, there will never be another 666 in the calendar year until a thousand years from now. So this has got to be very significant. And you know what was so weird? On September, which a lot of stuff happens in September. Ooh, there we go. Confirmation bias again. And sure enough, I mean, yeah, a lot of things happen in September. There's a lot of things happening in August. There's a lot of things happening in November. There's a lot of things happening in February. I mean, we go on and on with this. And yet, right before the Jewish Feast of Trumpets, see, we're tying this in. The trumpets, ooh, the trumpet sound, and this surely has to be the end. It's 666, and the Feast of the Trumpets are coming. Surely this is it. So you know what ended up happening there in London? A fire broke out and uh, literally destroyed tens of thousands of homes. And do you not understand? They didn't have the internet back then. They didn't have telephones. They didn't have television. They didn't have radio. People were freaking out. And of course, it, that was not quite as impressive as in 1833, when there was this amazing meteor shower that literally convinced people seeing it that this was literally the end of the world. Uh, it is estimated that somewhere around 240,000 visible meteors were, were seen during a nine-hour period. I mean, they said it was like rain, literally rain. And then everybody was was terrified. Again, no radios, no television, none of the stuff to go back and examine history to see that this just so happens to happen every so many years. And yet they were convinced because they had read there in Mark chapter 13 that the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers of, that are in heaven shall be shaken. Now they were convinced and of course, this is an example of what I'm talking about. And I don't know, how many of you, for, you know, forgot just, it was only a, a few years ago, a handful of years ago, three years technically, that the, the world was in an uproar because of um, the possible end of the world. Uh, here's a license plate from California, and it's December 2012. Of course, they were very concerned because, you know, that's it's what California people are into, you know. I remember preaching during the, uh, several times 
that year in California, and people thought I was nuts. They said, John, it's Notre Dame. I mean, he, he talked about it. You know, and the sad thing, I mean, you watch History Channel and they act like these guys are just absolutely geniuses and have this inroad with knowledge and foreknowledge and somehow know something. And yet, you know what the, the old saying is, a broken clock is correct at least twice a, a day. You ever notice that? And every once in a while, these guys will get it right and they go, see, see. But did you know the Bible says the only way to test if, a genu- if, if they're a genuine prophet of God, if they are right 100% of the time. If they're not right 100% of the time, then do not listen to them. God says they made it up. Well, that's kind of a standard because let's just admit it, folks. If God said it, it's going to happen, Right? But do you remember, there was actually a movie about it that came out. And I mean, it showed, you know, San Francisco being devastated. And finally, the, you know, uh, you know this, this thing that people have been talking about for 20, 30, 40 years now. The California's going to fall off the edge. It's all going to happen right there in 2012. And the reason why this was such a big thing, I mean, Hollywood made a big deal about it. And, you know, of course, they it opens up with the... The saying, never before has a date in history been so significant to so many cultures, so many religions, scientists, and governments. This has got to be it. And of course, it wasn't. But the proof, the confirmation was that this particular winter solstice marks the first time in 26,000 years that there was an alignment with the sun and the earth and the center of the Milky Way galaxy. There's the proof. This is the end of the world. The gravitational pull is going to literally pull this planet apart. It's going to be devastated. In case you don't know, that, that was three years ago. Right. By the way, scientists even jumped on board, like they said. And they said, listen, these solar flares, they're going to reach the, the peak there in 2012. It's going to literally cause major damage. It's going to bring the power grids down. It's going to destroy the satellites. This radiation is going to be a mess. And maybe possibly the earth will be turned upside down. Well, this whole thing, which, you know, was during the time of the Mayan prophecy. Everybody was talking about this little disc of the Mayan calendar. And, you know, I thought, I thought this cartoon was kind of cute. How come it ends in 2012? I ran out of space on the rock. But they knew, everybody knew, well, the Mayans have an, an insight about all this stuff. They know things. Folks, these were people that would cut people's heart out, pull a heart if it's still pumping, and they'd sacrifice it to their gods. That's the kind of people you want to believe? Well, listen, if you're not going to believe the Bible, sure, that's what people believe. And then right before that year, obviously, um, was... um, you know, Harold Camping's prediction that the rapture would take place on May the 21st. And guess what? He literally had all the numbers out. I mean, he did an intense study, had it all figured out based on all his investigation. Very bright man right there in, in, in California had the family, uh, you know, radio station. And I mean to tell you, it was it was all the time. And of course, when the closer it got to May 21st, the more skeptical people got and the more concern others got. And, uh, you know, days before, I, you know, I mean, when this has all happened, I said, it's not going to happen. It won't happen. It's impossible to happen. It will not happen. And of course, people thought, well, you, you're just unbeliever. Anyway, long story short, it didn't happen. You want me to tell you the reason why? Because I, I already have an authority. I don't need Harold Camping to tell me that's going to happen because God already said, dude, you don't know. 
By the way, Harold Camping, you know, then followed it up and says, well, the rapture's taking place on May 21st. The end of the world will literally be on October 21st of 2011. That's six months later, and it's going to all devastate. Well, when October rolled around, nothing happened, and the rapture didn't happen. Harold Camping, and he's dead now. He just recently died. He said, after all my study and research, I've come to the conclusion no man knows the day nor the hour. You know, they could have saved hundreds of millions of dollars because they bought these billboards, bought these big gigantic motor homes and would drive all over the... And they spent tens of millions of dollars on literature that totally went down the drain. And of course, here's the plain and simple facts. Date setting is an attack on the authority of the scripture. Jesus said it, and that settles it. It don't matter if you believe it or not. Jesus said, no one knows. So forget it. What was the disciples, I mentioned this last night, what was the disciples wanting to talk to Jesus about before he ascended? Is this now the time that you're going to restore the kingdom? He said, you know what, forget that. Go get filled with the Holy Ghost and get the work done. And by the way, folks, I believe that we need to call this what it is. It is a rebellious sin when men do this. I mean, let's stop. Let's stop with all the stupidness and let's just call it what it is. If Jesus says you don't know and they say they do know, Jesus is true and they are a liar. Let's just call it what it is, folks. By the way, my attitude is I'm going to get off the planning committee and I'm going to get on the welcoming committee. Okay? I'm not going to, you know what? Get, forget the calendar. Forget it. Forget the moon phases. Forget, just get busy welcoming to him whenever, whenever he wants to come. Just be ready. Amen. Amen? Stop trying to figure it out. Now, I want everyone to look at the word believe. What do you see as the very center of the word believe? Lie. Did you know, actually, the scripture talks about what happens in the last days, that they will believe a lie and they will be damned, the scripture says. Let me ask you a couple questions that I need for you to respond for just a minute, and then we're going to get into the real meat of all this. Is it possible to believe something and yet it not be true? Okay. Is it possible to be very sincere in your belief and it still not be true? Okay. Can a Christian believe something and it not be true? Okay. So far we're hitting good bad in here. So can a Christian ever be deceived? Now, some would say no, but why would then Jesus say several times, especially after they asked about signs of the end time, why would the first thing that came out of his mouth take heed that no man what you deceive you? Because guess what? There's going to be a ton of deception around the coming of the Lord. Now, folks, let me tell you something. We have spun our tires too many times on this. We keep getting stuck in the same ditch. Can't we just grow up and get out of this thing? And yet, here's the deal. I remember, maybe some of you remember, there was a show on television, and, and it, was, it was really a funny show. It was called The Liars Club. And what it was, was it would have like these celebrities and they would sit around and they would, the, the, the host of the show would hand them an object. And they would tell you, I mean, it was some bizarre looking object. I mean, a tool or whatever, some box or whatever. And they would tell what this thing was. Now, you had a panel of people who ended up having to figure out who was telling the truth and if they figured it out, they would win increments of $100. Now, what I found interesting is to see how quickly these actors could come up with a convincing lie and totally dupe the people. It was fun watching it, not because I'd like to see people's dupe, it's just like, what an illustration, man, how people are so gullible. 
And yet when you really take a look at this, you have to ask yourself, why are believers so gullible and so trusting to just believe anything that somebody says without doing just a little work, just a little investigation. And I'll tell you the reason. When I was typing this this afternoon, I was thinking to myself, the reason why, folks, is because most of us really are sincere. Most of us really are honest. Most of us don't want to lie or deceive anybody. We just believe everybody else is like that. But that's not true. Okay? The fact of the matter is, we really need a new, fresh um, love for investigation. This is exactly what happened in the book of Acts as Luke is recording traveling with Paul. Can you imagine being able to travel with Paul and hear him preach and teach? So he ends up in this area called Berea. He had just left Thessalonica and they had a great revival. He was going to Berea and, and, and things are happening. Here's what it says. These people that were living there in Berea were more noble than those that were in Thessalonica. Why? Because they received the word with all readiness of mind. That's an important thing. Amen? When the word is being taught, you need to be very open to the word. And number two... What did they do? They searched the Word. They searched the Scriptures to see whether those things that Paul was talking about and teaching was accurate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if Luke calls them people noble when they're testing the Apostle Paul, then how much should we be testing everything we hear? Just because somebody's on Christian television and has a great big chart behind him does not mean he's telling the truth. Just because he's a great man, just because he might be a famous preacher, or just because he knows a lot, that does not necessarily mean that what he's saying right then is biblically accurate. I'll be honest with you. You watch... 24, just turn your television on, Christian television, and sit there and try to watch it for 24 hours. I'll tell you what will happen. You'll come out more confused than a termite in a wooden yo-yo. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what you'll, you'll hear and see and experience. Because, folks, there's a, there's a lack of respect for God's Word. Mark Twain put it this way. He was an unbeliever, but he said, you know what? A lie can travel halfway around the world while truth is still putting its shoes on. And that's exactly what's happened here. This thing has spread throughout the church. And it's so spread that literally, if you say it's not true, people start hating your guts. I've actually had people block me, delete me, take the men off their friends because I said what I said about the blood. And they're just like, are you really being honest with this? Now, here's the deal, folks. <clears throat> I want to give you four. There's four lies. There's a lot more, but I just want to talk about four tonight because um, I just don't want to wear out your time. Lie number one. The blood moons are rare signs and is a bad omen to warn Israel something traumatic or world-changing is about to happen to them. Now, I am giving portions of exact quotes from the most popular blood moon teachers when I'm giving these things. That is a lie. What I just read to you is a lie. It's, first of all, how would you say it's a lie, John? Well, because number one, folks, if the Word of God is the ultimate truth, give me a chapter and verse that says that. And they'll all say, well, go to NASA's website. I've been to NASA's website. And guess what? NASA doesn't believe the Bible. Much less believe. As a matter of fact, I just went to NASA's website today and they mocked the blood moon prophecy. But anyway, this is the first lie. Now, if, if you are basing your beliefs on a prophecy expert, and I put that, I wanted to put that in quotes, 
But if that's what you are basing and you base it on them alone, then you're in trouble. Now, let me tell you, I listen to most of the prophecy experts. I have a, on my website, you know, we, or I'm, I'm sorry, on my, on my Internet Explorer, I have all my little favorites. And the things that I save the most are my favorites of, of certain Bible teachers and Bible topics. And I love prophecy. So obviously I consult all these guys. And you know, folks, I, I can't rely on them. Because guess what? They're just like me. And I can't trust John Muncy's opinion, much less any other person's opinion. I've got to go to the Word of God. Now, now you better do better than trusting some guy on television or some guys that's got DVDs out or CDs out or somebody's got a book out. Okay? You better get better than a man's word. You better get God's word on it. So now, give me a chapter and verse that states that, that the blood moons are rare and that they're an omen to Israel. Just give me that. And you can't give me that. And you know you can't give me that because if you said that, you can't be honest and say that. It does not exist. And yet, here's the problem, folks. A lot of these experts have their books located on the nickel shelves at Goodwill's today because what they said in the past never did end up coming to pass and nobody wants their books anymore. And I, but you know what? I still have a lot of those books. I just I leave them on my shelf because I like to say, here is 88 reasons why Jesus did not come in 1988. I still have that book. And I have the other book, 101 reasons why he would come from a different author in 88. And I remember going to a church and preaching how ridiculous that is back in 1987. From that day on, that church would never have me back. Of course, even after 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 100, and they got so upset because guess what? They believed it with all their heart and I had come and threw uh, water, ice water on their fire. But you know what, folks? <laughs> Maybe it's pride, I don't know. But it's okay to admit you're wrong. I have to admit I'm wrong every day of my life. Um, but conveniently, when talking about this, most of these blood moon teachers hide the facts that Israel wasn't even a nation when the first five times a lunar tetrad occurred. Now, we're talking... There's eight of them that have occurred since Christ so far. There's going to be many more. There's going to be actually a hundred, I'm sorry, uh, 80 something in our century. Okay? And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But what I find interesting is that the blood moon teachers will admit, if you press them on it, they won't admit it in their books, they won't say it on their videos, but they will admit to you that Nothing important happened to the Jews during the first four tetrads. But then they'll point out that something did happen in the last four. And is that consistent? I mean, let's just be honest. If you fly in a plane and it arrives safe 50% of the time, is that a plane you want to ride in? Okay. Oh, we only missed it 50% of the time. Okay. Well... Let me just explain something real quickly. The phrase blood moon, okay, that's not actually uh, a, a biblical term. That, now, that it talks about the moon turning the blood and, and all that, or, or red or whatever, but literally the blood moon is a word that describes something that is actually called, technically, scientifically called, a total lunar eclipse. As you see right here, what happens is the sun ends up getting in between, I'm sorry, the earth gets in between the sun and the moon. And as a result, when the rays of the sun beam around the earth, since it's obviously much, much bigger, the rays of the sun, which is blocking now the little tiny uh, moon, 
And you've seen the red shift. You've seen the, you see it at nighttime when the sun goes down. A lot of times you'll see the sky will turn red. That's only because of what happens when light meets the atmosphere. It'll break off into that way. That's just one of the colors in the, in the, um, the prism. And the reason why it reflects that way is because actually it's completely dark, but there's still rays coming around the earth and it makes it happen. That, that gives it its red appearance. Now understand, folks, I won't be saying this the rest of the night, but that's what's called a total lunar eclipse. We've all seen, we've all seen them. And I mean, we see, you know, there's lunar eclipses constantly in our months. But we don't make a big deal about it. We'll see quarter moons and all the different, you know, all the rest. But now a total lunar eclipse really is not as rare that people think. I mean, there's 85 this century and literally about one in three lunar eclipses ends up being a total eclipse. Now that's 37, technically 37.3%. Now that's 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 not rare. I mean, if it was 0.37%, that would be, or, or 3.7%, but one out of three, that's not very rare. I mean, it's, it's rarer than two out of three, but it's one out of three, that's not bad. Okay, it's, so it's not something that we could freak out and say, man, this is so unusual. Well, I mean, if you if you got stopped by one out of every three red lights, would you go, oh my goodness, this is crazy. I'm getting stopped one out, one out of every three red lights. This is, this is some, there's something going on in the world right now. By the way, the last tetrad was 2003, 2004, and there will be a total of eight lunar tetrads this century. So even the tetrads, and a tetrad, by the way, is four in a row of the blood moons. Okay? So technically, no, it's not rare. It really is not rare. But now, wait a minute, John. You also said that it's a lie to say that something happens to Israel, or you, you say that's wrong, but I, I don't think it's wrong. Didn't you notice when there's a blood moon it happened? Duh! Have you not noticed that it happened before the blood moons? And guess what? It'll happen when there isn't a blood moon five years from now if the Lord should tarry. Because guess what? Israel is a punching bag. They hate the Jews. Blame it on the Jews. I, I, I just found out that ISIS, we talked about ISIS last night, ISIS has just announced that a plague of flesh-eating disease has struck the ISIS camps. And literally, their, their skin is being eaten alive. And it's a virus. And of course, uh, I, had, I had mentioned something in the article somebody put on my page, and I said, isn't it funny? Israel, the Jews, just a few months ago, won a, uh, a bid to develop this new vaccination that will keep you from dying from these flesh-eating things, which I think is kind of funny, because it's like Israel does this all the time. They'll, they'll, take, they'll take Palestinians that get really messed up, and they'll bring them into their hospital free of charge and get them all healed up. And, you know, and they have discovered an amazing amount of Things they they have invented, and of course they've won Nobel Peace Peace Prizes for all these things. Absolutely mind boggling. More geniuses has come out of there. By the way, has anybody heard this guy uh, called Einstein? Yeah, he was a, he was a Jew, like thousands and thousands of other people. That God said, "I'll make you a blessing to the world." By the way, if you have a cell phone, think the think the Jews. You know, if you have. Um, if, uh, I mean, there's, there's so many things. That's another mess. I don't want to get off on that rabbit trail. Uh, Netanyahu was interviewed by um, Fox News the day he was voted back in as the prime minister. And she asked him about what it's like to be the prime minister 
and how, what you have to face. And his answer was, as the prime minister of Israel, and I can speak personally, in the nine years that I have been in office, there's not been a day, a day, that I haven't thought about the things that I have to do to protect the survival of Israel. The fact of the matter is, folks, if you think, but John, did you notice when there were blood moon, they were, they were shooting rockets out of Gaza. Folks, they've been doing that for years. Okay? Sure. Yeah. But guess what? It didn't have anything to do with a, a, a red moon. You think, the red? oh no, a red moon. They're going to start shooting rockets at us. No, folks, that's, that's stupid. Can I just call it what it is? The fact of the matter is, there's an endless array of anti-Israeli events that are happening somewhere around the world literally every single day. If anybody knows this, I surely do because I spend my time doing research on that. The fact of the matter is, you cannot get away from this worldwide explosion of anti-Semitism that's been going on for quite a long time. But back before the blood moons even showed up. Which, by the way, leads us to the second lie. Here it is. The blood moon tetrad occurred during the Spanish Inquisition that expelled the Jews from Spain. See, John, there it is. You're denying something that is as obvious as can be. Really? Did you do your homework? Okay, now I know all the prophecy guys that say this, the experts with their charts, the big long charts, the pictures and all that, and know all that. Guess what, folks? That lie is actually sown, by the way, as one of the major proofs that a blood moon is a bad omen. It's a warning to the Jews and to Israel. And this is the proof. Okay, well, let's take a look at this for a second. Is everybody ready to really look and see if this is a lie or true? But by the way, those who claim this, that Spain expelled the Jews in 1492 and that this was during a blood moon omen against Israel are not being completely truthful. Because why, John? Well, the fact is the actual tetrad occurred on Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. Have you heard that before? In 1490 what? Three. And 1494, not 1492. Now here's the thing. They'll put the charts up, but they won't show you that. They'll just say, well, right when this is going on, this is what was happening. Well, folks, somebody is stretching a little bit. Now, let's just be honest. Somebody is telling the truth and somebody is lying. Now, either I'm lying or I'm telling the truth. Either they're lying or they're telling the truth. And guess what? Nobody has to doubt. It's documented. Go to NASA. Okay? Get your history books out and compare the notes. Okay? The Jews were expelled from Spain a full 18 months before the first blood moon that showed up in 1493 all the way to the end of 1494. Matter of fact, by that time, Columbus is coming back. <laughs> Somebody is not doing their homework or is purposely lying about the dates. How could people miss this timing so badly? Are they not checking their dates and their facts? Apparently, the majority of people that believe this and that are teaching this have not even had the common decency to check on the dates. I know personally friends, preachers who preach this, and they'll say it because so-and-so said it, the expert said it. Well, the fact of the matter is, folks, this is a shame. But it's more than a shame. 
Now it's becoming a sham. Because if this is your proof, your proof isn't holding water. Now listen to me, because the Spanish Inquisition actually started 15 years before 1493 and ended nearly 350 years later. Okay? Now, you think 15 years before is, or later is a, a sign? I mean, but here's what they'll do. This is how they get around this. Because I've, I've watched this over and over, read the books, everything. I've listened to the sermons. I've watched all the videos. What ends up happening, they'll try to give some credibility to its association with the blood moons because they say that it is, it's connected to the degree that was issued on March the 31st, which officially, which was the official expelling of the Jews from Spain. But even then, folks, that first eclipse didn't occur until over a year later and the uh, last eclipse over two years later. So now, do your addition here. How could that be a warning if it showed up a year later? Okay? How could something that happened a year or two later serve as a prophetic warning sign? Does this not sound a little off? Somebody isn't being honest here, folks. So unless you call being off a year God's way of predicting something, then this blood moon tetrad theory needs to be re-examined since it isn't much of a prophetic warning sign. Jesus clarifies when you can call a prophecy a prophecy. When, when, do you know, when do you call a prophecy a prophecy? Well, Jesus said in Matthew 24, Behold, I told you after? I told you what? Before. Read it. It's, it uh, that's, that's all that verse says. Behold, I told you before. Want me to tell you the reason why? Because that's, duh, duh. That's what prophecy is. You tell it before it happens. Right? Okay, now listen. By the way, um, let's go back to this for just a second. Get the point that, and if it's not clear, we'll make it clear. Just remember what I just said, and I'll show you the, the next lie. Lie number three, and there's four of them. Lie number three, the tetrad blood moon was a sign that occurred during Israel's declaring independence. Now, folks, this is another example of a very dishonest, dishonest dealing with the dates of the blood moon tetrad associating with a warning. Now, if we're going to say, here's the dates, at least get the dates right, correct? If you said, I was born, and then you fudged on your date of birth 15 years, would you, are you being honest? How about 18 months? Could you say, well, technically I wasn't born. I was born 18 months before that. Okay, are you being honest then? I mean, a date's a date, folks. It's either or it isn't. This is not, this is not 2016, believe it or not. Okay? So here's what I want you to do is take a look at this fact. This is real simple. Many of you know this. Israel became a nation on May 14, 1948. Did I not tell the truth? Do you know that to be the fact? You say, well, I'm not really sure. I think you might be making it up. Well, then guess what? Get on the internet, look it up, get your books, look it up. It's, it's documented. Yet, the blood moon warning doesn't show up to almost an entire year later. Shy of just a... Uh, 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 just a handful of weeks from being a whole year. The blood moon tetrad did not start until April 13th, 1949. Now, wait a second. Let's, do, let's figure this out. These blood moon warnings are telling people what's getting ready to happen to Israel. Okay? So, Israel becomes a nation. A year later, 
Hey, guess what? Israel's getting ready to become a nation. Why? The blood moon told me. How many know that's not adding up very good here? Now stick with me for a second. Here, here's, here's the deal. When you look at this, you have to ask yourself, is this a prophetic warning to Israel, seeing that it occurred, the blood moon didn't show up till a year later? How is an event that happens a year to two years later, which is exactly what the Tetrads did, how in the world could that be a prophetic warning to anyone? Warnings are given before they happen, not after they happen. A person given a prophetic warning a year or two after the event occurred would be considered a little weird, wouldn't you think? Okay? Yea, the Lord has said. Yea, even now the Lord says. In January of 2015, saith the Lord, temperatures are going to get dis- dis- horrible and low and it's going to be freezing cold. Oh, wait a minute, this is April. Now, how many would know that would be stupid for somebody to stand up and do that? And yet, folks... Consider this for a second. You give a tornado warning that way? Is that how the weatherman does? After the tornado wiped the city out. By the way, folks, be ready because there's a tornado coming yesterday. Oh, that guy's been doing a little bit too much time traveling. Right? Well, then, if we don't give tornado warnings that way, then why would we believe Bible predictions that way? How in the world? But see, this is how, this is how foolish people are when they, they say, well, yeah, but John, it was close. Well, let me, let me ask you a question. Who ever heard of putting a warning for a bridge out a mile past the bridge? Right? And yet, that's exactly how the blood moon warning system is actually working here. <clears throat> Some warning. I mean, a warning is set up before the thing one is being warned about happens, right? I mean, this is, what, this is how you see when there's a bridge out. You put it before the bridge, not after the bridge. Watch out, there's a bridge out! Okay? Otherwise, it's not a warning sign, it's a history lesson. Right? The fact of the matter is, close is fine for horseshoes, but not for prophecy. Well, John, it was close. Yeah, but folks, if you're going to build a doctrine off of this, close doesn't count. Because God's not, God doesn't deal that way. By the way, this, this tetrad, this Four blood moon tetrad that was such a big deal. These teachers are literally misstating the actual date of the blood moon tetrads. Seems to be then seem to be doing it deliberately. No one could get that far off who really knows what he or she's talking about unless they are being deceitful. They speedily gloss over the actual dates, hoping that people don't notice their discrepancy. And listen, if you, if you work with people who lie, you catch this stuff. Talk to policemen. They'll tell you about how people lie all the time. What's their body language? Watch what they do with their hands, their mouth, their eyes. And, and listen to their, the way they say it. And watch. They'll just suddenly say it and just go on as if, well, hopefully they didn't catch that. And, and you can watch the videos and l- listen to them say that. They'll say, well, there was a blood moon at uh, the Spanish Inquisition. There was a blood moon when Israel becomes a nation. There was a blood moon in the Six-Day War. There's a blood... Oh, now, wait a minute. The ideal is that, well, these are omens. These are warnings. And so logic would tell you that this would happen the way that order happens. How dishonest some people can be thinking that they are doing God a favor by stretching the truth a little. For these blood moon teachers to fudge on their dates 
in order to prove their point, not only proves it to be unethical and unscientific, but it proves that somebody's not being honest. Let me tell you, a warning is that is a full year after the event is not prophetic, it's pathetic. <laughs> we just need to get real, folks. Amen? Amen? Now, by the way, while we're on this for a second, let me kind of stop and get off on a little rabbit trail for a second. These people can't make up their minds if the blood moons are actually a bad omen or not. That's what they say. They say it's a bad omen, but then they put it in a particular order, then they get, it's already in your mind, it's a bad omen, okay, wow, I believe whatever you say. But then it doesn't add up, folks. Let me give you an example. They claim that it is a warning of an ominous event. I'm quoting their exact words. Or a bad omen for Israel. Really? Well, let me ask you, would Israel becoming a nation be interpreted as something awful? Was the victory in the Six-Day War one of the shortest wars of all time with the preemptive strike from Israel and the recapturing of the city of Jerusalem be considered something dreadful? I mean, if we're going to say, well, yeah, well, well, we know it's a bad omen because that's, that's, the Bible says the moon is a sign. It'll be a sign. You know what? That's, it's only found one time in the Bible. And it's the book of Genesis. And it said that God put the sun and the moon for signs and seasons. You say, well, out there it says sign. Yeah, but no, wait a minute. Stop. What, what's the sign? Well, it's for a sign. Well, what's the sign? Well, it's a, it's a sign. It's a warning. No. It's not... That, of course, that's what you want to think, and then immediately you build everything on that little doctrine. I mean, folks, do you understand that there is a, a sign that a new month has started? There's a sign that a new day has started. When you use the moon and the star as a sign, that's a, it's not like, see, something bad's getting ready to happen to Israel. Okay, well, let me just tell you something. Superstition, it's a sign. When a black cat walks in front of you, it's a sign. That's what they're trying to say this means. It's a sign. When that happens, it's a sign. When You know, it's funny. I had uh, uh, just about a week ago, I had a, uh, a red bird come up to my office and it started tapping on my window. And I was just starting to work on my thoughts on this and a red bird and I, I knew I remember hearing it that that was a sign for something so I looked it up on the internet <laughs> it's a sign somebody's getting ready to die okay and of course the next website said it's a sign that prosperity's coming to you okay so which is it is it bad news or is it good news Okay, but it's a sign. No, I'll tell you what it is. That little red bird was trying to find out what is this little thing that's hard. And I, I can see through it, but I can't peck through it. There's no sign. This is not some ominous omen of some type. A black cat walks across the street because he's trying to figure out why the chicken crossed the street. Right? Right? It's no sign. Unless you're superstitious. And then you'll freak out. Now, if the blood moon tetrads are indeed of such great significance, as brother so-and-so has been saying now, and brother so-and-so has been teaching now, and are major warnings to Israel and the Jewish people, then... Why were there absolutely no blood moon tetrads, these great significant warnings? Why were there no warnings in 1446 BC when Israel left Egypt in the Exodus? Or in 1406 BC when Joshua entered the Promised Land? Or in 7. 23 BC when the 10 northern tribes went 
into Assyria captivity. Or in 587 BC when Judah went into Babylonian captivity. Or in 538 when Cyrus proclaims the Jews could return to Canaan. Or in 533 BC when the Jews began their return to Jerusalem from Babylon. If this is so significant, and these are very significant events, where's the blood moons? Or how about in 33 AD when Jesus was crucified? Why wouldn't there be any blood moon in 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed? Why was it in, in 135 AD when Hadrian was killing and expelling hundreds of thousands of Jews from Jerusalem and then turned around and named Jerusalem Palestine after Israel's enemies, the Philistines? I mean, that was a major one. Major blow to them. Burnt the temple down. What, why, why was there no blood moon in 1943 when Hitler killed 6 million Jews during the Holocaust? If this is such a great, significant, major warning to Israel and the Jewish people, where were the signs? If that's what it means. At the same time, folks, not only did each of those important events have no blood moon tetrads, but the falling blood moon tetrads had absolutely nothing significant happen on their appearance. In 162 AD, nothing happened. There was the tetrad. The four blood moons in a row. This is a bad omen. Why in 795 was there nothing happened? And in 4, 842, nothing happened. And in, four, in 860, nothing happened. These were rare occurrences as warnings. The fact of the matter is, if these indeed powerful, and I'm quoting one of the best known speakers on this, powerful, world-shaking, significant signs for Israel, why are the blood moon teachers conveniently passing over these tetrads. I mean, folks, as I mentioned a moment ago, 50% is hardly a good average. Right? And then the last one, number four. Here's the last lie. The tetrad blood moons that are occurring right now one happened this morning. Did you see it? It happened today. That's why I want to speak on this. This is the first time I've ever spoke on this. I thought it would be neat to do it on a blood moon. <clears throat> <laughs> so this particular tetrad of 2014, we've now had three of them happen. we got the next one coming up in September. The tetrad blood moons that are occurring in the 2014-2015 space, are talked about in the Bible and that they have very important, world-shaking significance, especially for Israel. And where do they go? They go to the book of Joel and they go to the book of Revelation. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the book of Joel and I'm going to go to the book of Revelation and we're going to look at this because this is what you do. You are more noble because you search the scriptures daily to see if this is so. Why? Because you're trying to be a credible believer. I got news for you folks. Listen, we are going to lose what little bit of youth that we have left and thinkers left if we keep pretending when things aren't really real. Everybody doesn't have faith like some of you have. They don't, they just trust whatever. Some people saying, I'm not too sure you people got your head screwed on straight. And you give them evidence that we're wrong, then they're convinced, I ain't coming back to church again. This is the one of the biggest lies that most of these blood moon believers teach about the blood moons. What they're doing, they are cherry-picking passages that mention the, the moon turning red or turning to blood. And I'll show these to you in a second. And they believe. 
that this that what is happening right now is being fulfilled out of the book of Joel and out of the book of Revelation. And I have personally heard the, the, the real discoverer of this say several times, and now he's really started to backtrack, that this is, I, literally, I heard him say at first, this has to be when the rapture takes place. Now, he said that about four or five years ago. He doesn't say that anymore. Of course, his, te- his book or his teaching was heard by another very famous preacher. He heard it. He ended up flying and meeting this guy. They sat and talked, and he did a series on it, made a, made a book, and has made tens of millions of dollars. Okay, actually, they just came out with a movie about a week ago. And, um, but in, in, incidentally, folks... These teachers are making a big deal about the 2014-2015 blood moon tetrads because they are persuaded that these tetrads have to happen in order for the Bible prophecies to be fulfilled. But I'm going to prove to you in just a moment that this is absolutely impossible. 100% impossible, biblically and scientifically impossible. 2014, 2015, Jesus is not coming. I can guarantee the end of the world is not going to happen then. Absolutely guarantee it. Wow, John, you're awful bold. You're awful. You're dogmatic. You got a bad spirit about you. Okay. No, I'm, I'm telling you. And guess what? In 2016, we'll sit down and talk about it, Lord willing. Hopefully, we're both around. Okay? Now, let me just say, why do you say it's impossible? Because I want you to look at this picture. This is an artist. It's a beautiful artist, art, uh, artistic rendition of what is talked about in Joel and Revelation. But how many can see there's a little something strange about this picture? What is making the earth lit up? Huh? You got the sun back there, and you got the moon over there being red, and you got the earth, looks like somebody took a, a light, a flashlight, and shined it on, on the moon from one direction, shined it on the earth from another direction. Now, let me just tell you what that is. That's an artist, that's a, what you call artistic license. Okay? You're fudging a little bit to make a point. But we're going to use that in the background because let's take a closer look at this. Because, first of all, what you're seeing right there is literally impossible. How many know the only reason why you can see the earth is not because the earth glows? How many, how many, how many know I'm not making this up? Okay? And not only that, the the moon doesn't glow. How many know when you see the, the beautiful moon tonight, how many know that that is not shining? That is not shining, believe it or not. I hate to, you know, spoil some of your all's thought, thoughts, but that all that is is a, a reflection of a light source. And is the light source our, our lights on the planet Earth? No, it's what? The sun. And I'm going to show this to you in just a second. The only reason why it was lit up about six hours ago on the planet was it because the moon was out that the sun that the that we were lit up out out here. We could all nobody needed a flashlight. We we're out there walking around outside. You know why? Because it was the sun was shining. Okay. Now, with that in mind, let me read to you from Revelation chapter six. By the way. I go in great detail on my DVD series about all this. I actually talk about how this is happening, what is going on here. But I want you to listen to what it says. This is right in the middle of the first set of judgments that are hitting the earth. It starts there in chapter 6, verse 1. We get to verse 12 and we find out that the sixth seal has been broken. There's... There's seals on this document. It's a, a rolled up scroll. It has seven seals on it. And Jesus takes and breaks the seals. And as he breaks each of the seals, 
traumatic events take place on the earth. We're now to the sixth seal. And he says, John says, I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. All right, let's stop for just a second. Did you notice it says the, bl- the moon became as blood? Okay, and I'm, not, I'm purposely not mentioning these guys' names so nobody will get offended, but most of you know who I'm referring to. These guys say that that's a blood moon because it says the, mo- the moon turns as blood. You say, well, John, duh, blood moon as, turns as blood. No, well, wait, wait a minute. I'll explain what I mean in just a second. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Okay, now folks, let's stop for just a second. Pastor just got back, him and his darling wife, from a little vacation on an island. Was Hawaii where it was 20 years ago? Pastor, was Hawaii still where it was? Yeah. Has it moved out of its place? Has, all, has every mountain moved out of its place? Well, let's look at some of these other things here. Let's, and we'll look at this in just a second. Watch this. And the kings of the earth... The great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men. And every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Now when the gentleman that first discovered... The blood moons, when he first started teaching this, he said, this is what God's word warns is going to come in Revelation because the next time there's a blood moon tetrad is going to be 600 years from now. There's no way that Jesus is not going to come before 600, uh, until 600 years from now. This is the last time we'll see this Blood moon tetrad. And by the way, that's a bold faced lie. Okay, but I'll get back to that in a second. All right. So, did you notice that there's seven outstanding events surrounding this so called blood moon tetrad? And the reason why they call it because there it is. It says the moon was as blood. I'll explain why I'm doing this in a second. Number one, there's a massive earthquake. Number two, there's the sun going dark. Number three, the moon becomes as blood. Number four, the stars of heaven fall to the earth. Number five, the heavens departed, rolling up like a scroll. Number six, every mountain and every island moved out of its place. And number seven, all the people fled to hide themselves for the fear of God's wrath. Now let me ask you a question. Did that happen today? Because today was a blood moon. Did that happen a year ago when the first two blood moons happened? Well, guess what? We've only got one more chance at this. September the 28th. Because if this is in fact what the Bible's talking about in Revelation 6, and it shows up right now, this is, the, this is as one famous preacher said, this is world changing. Well, yeah, if this is what's happening, you better believe it'll be world changing. It will change the world. I got news for you. This is the big one that everybody's been talking about. And it's, did, by the way, did we have a massive earthquake today and all the mountains and all the islands got moved? Hello? And you say, now wait a minute. 
Are you telling me that, that this is impossible? John, we see, we see solar eclipses all the time. We see moon eclipses, lunar eclipses. But I got news for you folks. This ain't that. And I'll prove it to you in just a second. I'll absolutely scientifically prove it to you in a second. But let me just tell you that. That's something that's very important here. Something so out of the ordinary happens here that everyone knows that it is an act of God, not just another predictable lunar eclipse. I mean, nobody got freaked out and started crying. No big... Did President Obama run to the mountains because of the blood moon today? It says the leaders of the world, all the mighty men, are going to go in hiding because of what this horrible series of events. The fact of the matter is, in addition, it should be obvious that anyone reading the verses that these events occur simultaneously and on the same day and at the same time, but if the blood moon tetrets of 2014 to 2015 are what is being talked about here, and when they, then they must be accompanied by the other unmistakable events as well. But let me ask you a question. Let's use a little logic here for a second. Let's set down the TV remote control. Let's turn off the television for a second and let's use our brains. We don't have to check out our brains when we listen to a Christian speak. We need to have our brains active. Has anyone thought of the fact that it is literally impossible for a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse to occur simultaneously. What do you mean, John? Do you know what causes a solar eclipse? That's where the sun goes dark. What causes that? Anybody remember? The moon gets in front of our view of the sun. So, there you have it. You have the sun has gone dark. The only problem is, folks... If that's happening, how can there be a blood moon since the only way to have a blood moon by the standards of what we're talking about tonight is for the moon to be on the other side of the planet Earth and it's refle- the sun is reflected. And now what happens? If there's a red moon, there's a blood moon, then that must mean you can still see the sun. So for the sun to be dark and the moon to be red, ladies and gentlemen, that is no blood moon tetrad. That's impossible. That will not ever happen to have anything to do with a natural occurring thing that has happened thousands and thousands of times since Adam and Eve were created. This is not natural. This is something so bizarre that is out of the ordinary extraordinary, okay? Something's going to be so devastating that is going to happen to the planet Earth that you will look up and the, 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 the heavens will be rolled up like a scroll, okay? And when you look, it suddenly stars start falling. Well, first of all, let me explain to you something that's very obvious. Stars are millions and millions and millions of miles from the planet Earth. But you know what we say, don't you? We say, look, there's a shooting star. That's not a shooting star. That's a rock about this big. But it's creating this huge trail and big bright light with a tail behind it. It's a little tiny pebble. We call them shooting stars, but they're not stars. When the stars fall to the earth. Okay, that, <clears throat> that could be like what we talked about, the, the meteor shower. Or it could even be something more bizarre than that. Because this earthquake could literally, you, we've seen this happen. Remember when Japan, the earthquake, it literally turned the earth on its axis? I forget how many degrees. It was something like three degrees. Yeah. Folks, this, this is going to make the Japanese earthquake look like nothing. 
And when you look up the sky and all of a sudden things start turning, what immediately happens to those stars? They start flying other directions. Okay, now let me just tell you something. Something is going on here that is nothing that you and I saw today or we'll see in September 28th. What the prophecies are talking about is a strange, unusual occurrence that has never happened in history. This can't be a typical blood moon event. The sun isn't giving off the light to create a blood moon. This can't be talking about the normal predictable uh, tetrad of blood moons. This event mentioned in Revelation is something completely different and it is so out of the ordinary that all the people who have knowledge of events like this are freaking out and immediately say, this is God's wrath. They don't believe in God's wrath right now. Nobody got on television and said, this is God's wrath. The news, the news didn't say, did, did you see God's wrath? And they're flying away to try to hide themselves. No. Okay? So let me know right now what I'm saying is the truth. This is not that. Now, let's look at Joel's account of the same event. We said Revelation. Let's look at Joel's. Here it is in chapter 2. The earth shall quake. Hello, there it is again. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. The stars shall withdraw their shining. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. This is the exact verse that brother so-and-so says is what's happening today. And it'll happen September 28th and it's happened two times last year. <clears throat> I got news for you. They're lying. This is not happened. Are you with me? Let's look. I want you to notice that Joel's account, the events include earthquake, the sun, the moon, the stars are all affected, and it's followed by the great and terrible day of the Lord. The event happened, and immediately the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now, how could anyone overlook the magnitude of the other events that are recorded for us here? This is not some normal, predictable a tetrad of blood moons. But it did talk about the moon turning to blood, right? Actually, Jesus points out that this happens at the very end of the Great Tribulation. Joel said it would happen right before the great and coming day of the Lord, the Tribulation. It's exactly what Revelation chapter 6 is. That's the beginning Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. I heard a voice like a trumpet says, Come up here. The church is taken out, and immediately the earth is thrown into havoc. Chapter 6, verse 1. The great tribulation is started. You get to verse 12 of chapter 6, and you're starting to see these events. This is well into the tribulation. But watch what Jesus said. Matthew 24. Immediately, what's the next word? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be what? The moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens shall be shaken. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're seeing here is very significant. Thus, if what Jesus is talking about here is what brother so-and-so has said on nationwide television, that Jesus predicted this event and this is going to happen, and it's going to happen within these two years, then the great tribulation is going on right now. And we need to conclude that no later than September 28th of this year, that the upcoming blood moons that are going to happen will be associated with Matthew 24 and Joel 2 are going to occur, which 
By the way, folks, if that's not what Jesus meant, and that's not what Joel meant, and that's not what John meant in Revelation, somebody's wrong, and it ain't Jesus, it ain't Joel, and it ain't John. Jesus is telling the truth, and not those guys. I'm thinking the blood moon guys are the ones that are fabricating this to make people believe something that isn't going to happen. By the way, the prophet Ezekiel speaks speaks of this strange event as well. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven, make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her light and the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord. Now what Ezekiel's talking about, what Joel talked about, what Revelation talked about, and what Jesus talked about in Matthew 24 is not the blood moons. These blood moons that are occurring right now. Now, what we see here, folks, so unless these blood moons teachers want to try to explain how these blood moon eclipses will make all the stars and every other light in the sky dark at the same time, when they should admit, then then they should admit that what they're talking about is not the same thing as what is the Bible's predicting Revelation, Joel, Matthew, and Ezekiel. If you notice, the great and intimidating earthquake happens as an integral part of all these signs. There is nothing about an eclipse or a blood moon tetrad that would cause an earthquake. This is something that everybody knows is beyond a predictable event such as an eclipse. Folks, you can get the charts out and tell when the next eclipse is going to happen. And guess what? It will happen. This is not something predictable. Nobody got warned about this. This is an act of God's judgment. The passages found that refer to this blood moon have nothing to do with the normal predictable events of a blood moon tetrad. To claim such is nothing but dishonesty. What happened with the blood moons in 2014 and about to happen in 2015 cannot be lined up scripturally with all the events of the judgments of Revelation 6 and the end of the tribulation, as Jesus said, and as Joel referred to, to somebody isn't being honest with these tetrads when they make them, when they make these claims. This isn't Bible truth. It is a part of a delusion and a superstition that God wants us as His people to flee from. Amen? Because God always tells us the truth. You know, folks, we need to stop focusing on a bloody... uh, We need to start focusing on a bloody cross and not a bloody moon. We should be keeping our eyes on the sun and not the moon. Amen? Now, I'm going to tell you... What I would like to do now is to open up for some questions and suggestions and then we'll let you all go. But let me just say this real quickly. If you're sitting here and you're not a believer, you don't know the Lord, I want to, first of all, apologize to you for some of the stuff that's done in the name of Jesus that is totally wrong. One of these examples is what we're talking about. But I got news for you. There is a focus on blood. It's the blood of Christ. It's not the effects of light going through the earth's atmosphere. Okay, and gives off that red tint. It's not really blood. But there is some real blood that was shed for you. And the Lord shed his blood to make provision for you and I to have access to God's forgiveness. Because all of us have done a very wrong thing in our life. And that is... We have voluntarily rebelled and sinned against God. And yet the Bible says that laid on him 
is the iniquity of us all. Jesus took the sin of the world upon himself and paid the payment, the debt, for our price tag. See, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if that means anything, it means this. God has an open door policy for you. If you want to come back to God, you want to come to have that fellowship that he so desires and most likely inside of you, you probably have that same desire. The door's open. And it's a free way in. And it was paid in full. You don't do anything about it. You can't buy it. You can't be good enough to get it. It's not for sale. It's offered to you as a gift. It's free. Want me to tell you the reason why? Because if it was for sale, we couldn't afford it. If it was for sale, you and I would never be able to pay it because we don't have that ability. Now, you can get to heaven by being good. The only problem is you ain't good enough. If you could be sinless, you could get there, but you, how many know you haven't, you, you, you failed? You failed just like I failed. So we have to come by grace. The Bible says God's unearned favor and approval is grace, and by grace you're saved. Through faith, and that's not even of yourself, that's a gift of God. So if you're sitting here tonight and you don't have that assurance in your heart that you're right with God, then take the faith that's inside of you and express it to God in Christ and say, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for me in my place and has offered to me a free pass into your heaven. I take it like a gift. I take it by faith. I trust. It's just like what pastor said tonight. He got on his knees. His brother shared the gospel with him and he was a changed man when he got done praying. It's it's not by obeying the Ten Commandments or putting money in the plate or coming to church or whatever else, getting baptized. It's just simply trusting. That's all it is. Put your trust. And the Bible says, if you believe in your heart, you will not be ashamed. Because if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that's what is celebrated tomorrow. The Bible says, if you believe and you confess, you'll be saved. How simple is that? Amen? All right, can we have the lights up a little bit? And we'll take about <clears throat> five minutes for questions, unless nobody has questions. And-